if the active ingredient is not high up the list, it will not work. You see people turning products and just writing it off simply because the active ingredient is not among the top five. <music> hello guys welcome back to my channel it's your favorite esthetician again if you're new here welcome my name is amaka and today we are talking about actives in skincare now specifically i'll be addressing what actives are and the right percentages for you so what are actives actives are sorry one second please active are those ingredients in skincare products that address a specific concern usually beyond just moisturizing because you know usually a moisturizer a serum in addition to whatever they are doing they always help to moisturize and reinforce the skin barrier actives are those other ingredients inside here that is responsible for addressing certain things so for example if you have acne and you want to get a moisturizer for example now you should be looking at moisturizers that contain the actives you're interested in you want to decongest your pores you want to kill bacteria you're looking for you're looking for um benzoyl peroxide you're looking for azelaic acid you're looking for um salicylic acid you want to address hyperpigmentation you're looking for those ingredients that actually address the hyperpigmentation so those are the things that we consider as actives a lot of people are now aware of actives it's not a new thing a lot of people are aware of it like you know, information is not everywhere thanks to the internet which is a fantastic thing people are now seeking it so they know their skin concern and they're now seeking for those actives that will address their skin concerns also because there's now a demand for actives brands are also giving you the actives like they're not active are not hard to find though ha before if you want to look see niacinamide something do like this now we eh, here turn front niacinamide turn side niacinamide back niacinamide front retinol there are now a lot of actives in the market you want actives you will have actives yeah this is not such a bad thing because what that means is you have you now have different options to choose from and with the right education it is a fantastic thing now right education being the key once you understand what is wrong with you and what you should be looking out for is now easy for you to find what you want the problem is when there is no appropriate information people can now overdo it which is a problem because sometimes you don't need more than one product with an active or with a particular type of active there are a lot of nuances to that but a lot of times and for a lot of people you don't need actives every single time every single day and in every single routine this brings me to the most important part of this video if you do need actives if really and truly you need actives what is the right percentage for you do you understand what is the right percentage that you should be looking out for now so when actives when products are formulated with actives there are three things the first one is the right the product was formed with the right and recommended level of actives most of the popular actives have a recommended level there's something called the therapeutic window which is a concept in pharmacology and which essentially means the window in which an ingredient or a medication would work effectively with minimal irritation. Anything below the therapeutic window is not as effective and anything above the therapeutic window will more likely cause irritation and sensitivity. The therapeutic window is just the right spot. Just like Pepe, you know, I like using food analogies for cosmetic formulation because they are very similar. Essentially, it is the combination of ingredients to form something. If you have a pot of edikaiko, put one small Pepe below the therapeutic window, you will feel it. Let's say the therape therapeutic window is 2 to 5%. Take it to 2, you can taste the Pepe. Move it to 3, you can taste the Pepe. Move it to 5, you can still taste the Pepe intensely. Move it to 6, there becomes a problem. Do you understand? It's still the same pepper, but you understand that there is a percentage where you should not pass. It's also a range. So even if you want it less peppery, you make it smaller. And more peppery, you make it larger. But anything outside it will either not even show at all or it be just too much. 
Do you get? So you have products that are formulated with within the therapeutic window. This is the ideal types that you should be looking out for. Then you have the ones that have been formulated with actives below the therapeutic window. The people that are Kony Kony, those brands, Kony Kony people. So essentially, they put in the ingredients because of the buzz around it. So everybody shouting that's not mind. But I mean, see, okay, one, okay, one. Okay, you want it, no problem. Let's formulate a product because sprinkle more small that's not my dear. Sprinkle it. Have you sprinkled it right on the body? That's not my dear. Do you understand? So you end up buying a product with just a pinch of the actives that is not within the therapeutic window to even work. The only reason why they put it there is because you people say you want it. And they're not brandish it in front of the product. Nice in mind. Salicylic acid. Whereas they went and put 0.00001% simply for the marketing of it. Do you understand? Simply for the marketing of it. Now, the third one is when they put the ingredients above the therapeutic window. A very popular chemist called this percentage chasing. And you see, both the consumers and the brands are guilty of it. Both of them are now, nah, they're running. They're running. Both of them are chasing percentage. And there are several reasons why this happened. Let me address the consumer, then I'll address the brand. Now, for consumers now, because of this, you know, awareness that actives work, an awareness that, you know, certain actives work for certain skin concerns, they now feel like the higher the percentage, the more effective it would be. So you have two serums. One is 5% and that one is not 10%. Ah, the 10% won't go work past. So do you understand the mentality? They are chasing percentage. They want it. They want more of it. Now you start hearing things like, uh, oh, if the active ingredient is not among the top 5 percentage, the, it will not work. If the active ingredient is not high up the list, it will not work. You see people turning products and just writing it off simply because the active, active ingredient is not among the top 5. Now, so what happens now? Brands are now producing products above the therapeutic window because that's what consumers want. The ordinary is one of the major culprits of this thing. They came out with a bunch of products. A lot of them had percentages higher than their counterparts and even higher than the therapeutic window. And then a lot of people felt that, ah, it's probably more effective now, 10%. If 5% can work, 10% will be fire. <laughs> do you understand? So I don't even know who started the pressure, whether it was because consumers wanted more, that brands they giving more, or that because brands they giving more, cause consumers now felt that more was better. I don't know who started it, but both parties are very guilty of this thing. It's also a way of brands to even market and get more money. A brand will produce two formulations. One has 5% lactic acid, and that one has 7%. Trust me, 7% will be more expensive. And even you as a consumer, if you see two products, one has seven, one has five, and the seven is more expensive, you think that the 10% is more effective. That's why it's more expensive, because we generally believe that things that are more expensive have more value. But if you remember what I explained about therapeutic window, you understand that higher percentages don't necessarily equal better or more effective. A lot of times, higher percentages equate to more sensitivity and irritation. So what I will do now is I will list out, you know, some popular actives and I will tell you their percentage, their therapeutic window. Do you get? Um, so if you have any active in mind um, and you hear it, just write it down so that when, you know, you are looking for products that have these actives you know what percentage to have in mind and you know what honestly speaking even sometimes brands are not obliged obligated to write out the percentages the exceptions for example salicylic acid or whenever an ingredient has been identified as a drug you have to write the percentage you get so sometimes you don't even see the percentage of your actives but you know having in mind the therapeutic window will help you understand how not to particularly panic if you see an active below the ingredient list. So let's list out some popular, you know, actives and their therapeutic, um, the recommended use level. For niacinamide, I'm looking at between two to five percent. That is the ideal range. You can get any benefit between two to five percent. Salicylic acid, zero point five to two percent. But if you have really oily skin, an acne-prone skin and you are addressing acne 
and you have oily skin. Most of the time, you benefit more when the salicylic acid is at a 2%. Do you understand? Yeah. So for retinoids, it depends on the type of retinoids. You have different types. So retinol palmitate, which usually acts more as an antioxidant, you can use it up until 2%. Shouldn't exceed 2%. For retinol, 0.25 to 1%. For retinaldehyde, 0.025 to 1%. Preferably at 0.05%. It's very effective and, you know, less irritation at that, at that percentage. Then for retinoic acid, that is retinoin, you have 0.025 to 0.1%. Remember, I'm calling from the least to the maximum. So anything less than 0.025 is below the therapeutic window for retinoic acid. And anything higher than... 0.1% would most likely be very irritating. Then for adapalene, over-the-counter, that you're using it at home, 0.1%. For benzoyl peroxide, you're looking at 2.5 to 10%. Remember, write it down, write it down. For panthenol, you should not exceed 5%. For urea, it depends on what you want it for. Urea, 0 to 10% act as a humectant, and above 10% act as a keratolytic. So it helps to break down um, excess um dead skin cells more like an exfo aid exfoliation then and um, for kojic acid you're looking at you can use um to 0 0.2 percent is it 0 0.2 percent no you can you know you can use to two percent but usually because kojic acid is really irritating it's advisable not to exceed one percent but you can use to two percent then for aha generally four to ten percent is ideal but for AHA, it's a bit different. That's your glycolic lactic acid. Now, the pH also plays an important role. The pH should be, at length, them say around 3.5 and a maximum of, of 4. But don't be worried if you see a slightly higher percentage, say 12% glycolic. Don't be worried because some most of the times, they slightly increase the pH from 3.5 to 4 to still keep it within the therapeutic window. Then for azelaic, azelaic acid is most effective between 15 to 20 percent. But in some jurisdictions like in the US, you don't have access to azelaic acid with high percentages except through prescription. Um, so for those people, you can also experience benefit using azelaic acid at around 10 percent as well. Um, for alpha butane, 0.2 to 2 percent, copper peptide, 0.1 percent. Tranexamic acid from 2 to 5% emulsions are, uh, you know, considered effective. And um, resveratrol, which is an antioxidant, 0.2% to 1%. Allantoin, 0.5% to 2%. Aloe, aloe vera should be above 10% because aloe vera is 99.5% water. For plant extract, so your green tea, leucorice extract, chamomile extract, most plant extract can be used from 0.5%. Then um, allantoin, 0.5% to 2%. Vitamin E, 0.02% to 0.5%. PHA, that is the polyhydroxyl acid, which, is, which are like the gentlest form of exfoliant, should not exceed 15%. And core enzyme Q10 can be used from 0.2 to 3%. So, um, obviously, I didn't cover all the actives, but I think I did it. Oh, no, no, I didn't say vitamin C. So, vitamin C, endoscopic acid, I didn't write it down here, but can be used from 5% to 20%, but ideally somewhere between 10 to 20%. Um, and pH of, like, 3.5-ish. Now, um, as you can see, most of your active are effective from 0.05 percent now why is it important to note that is you cannot use behind the ingredient list to know whether a lot of actives are within the therapeutic window except those actives that require high percentages to work of which you can see a lot of them do not and when arranging ingredient lists yes you're supposed to arrange your ingredient list from the most to the list but that only is only applicable to ingredients above one percent one percent and above so ingredients one percent and above should be arranged according to the potency anything below one percent can be scattered can be staggered now you see why that's a problem if most of your actives are effective at 0.05 percent if most of them are effective from that level it means that you can never tell whether or not they are within their therapeutic window. Because so a, a brand can try to put um, 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 something that is just slightly below 1% at the bottom. 
and you think, ah, it doesn't work. Do you understand? Does it mean that? Does it mean that it's totally useless to look at behind your product? No, it is not. You need to look behind your product to see the things that are inside there, to know if you are allergic to anything. For instances where you need a, you you specifically need a high percent of something to have an idea if it has that in high percent. Also, the actives that requ are required to work in high percent. You want to be sure that it is within a high percent. For example, now vitamin C that needs to be. 5% and above. If you open your product and see vitamin C down, 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 down. Ah, you need to know they work now. Do you understand? So don't panic when you want something that is very soothing and look at the ingredient list and list list and all the soothing plant extracts are at the bottom. It's possibly fine. You literally have to try a product to know whether or not you know it would you would like it at the end of the day. But beyond that, let's talk about some formulation, some things in the formulation that we make it impossible for you to really, really gauge by percentage. Now, there's something called slow release and fast release. Product containing actives, sometimes they can contain slow release and fast release. By slow release, it contains things that would help the active release small, small. By fast release, it means things that will help the active go faster. Do you understand? So, if a product is formulated with slow release and has high percentage of actives, it still may not be irritating because it has things that will slow down the release of those actives. So the actives may be high, but it's releasing, it's being released small, small. For example, if a if the actives are encapsulated, and also a product that contains alcohol, for example, denatured alcohol, boosting glycol, may make the active penetrate faster. So a product can have low percentage of ingredient, but with a penetration enhancer that will make that ingredient go fast into the skin also ph adjusting can also help for example um cosmetic chemists can either reduce the ph or increase the ph of the product to enable products that are ph based for example your ahas and vitamin c either penetrate faster or penetrate slower when they increase the ph it penetrates slower and when they reduce the ph it penetrates faster even you yourself can increase or reduce penetration you, you you can do it for example when you apply products on wet skin the penetration is enhanced is increased when you apply products over a moisturizer the penetration slows down also when you apply product then then cover it with an occlusive a vas vaseline or something that is we that really trap products in the penetration enhances in summary in summary actives are fantastic please research on the actives that you have chosen to pursue you shouldn't chase percentages because percentages does not equate effectiveness you also want to ensure that to an extent to an extent the ingredient that was put in the product wasn't just for marketing Unfortunately, you cannot always tell, but at least be satisfied that you have done your own due diligence. Then also, you don't always need actives. Honestly, you don't always need actives. Like, they are good to have. Oh, niacinamide, glycolic, they are wonderful. But honestly, everything that they do is just to help your skin do what it is originally designed to do. Also, if you are currently using products that contain these actives and in higher percentages, like higher than what I just listed out here, and you're not seeing any reaction, that's fine. Don't throw them away. That's totally fine. It's not everybody that would react to these things. Now, but if you find yourself struggling with an ingredient that a lot of people are tolerating, look at the percentage. It's possible that is because it is done too much that is making your skin react the way it's reacting to it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video. Bye, guys.